Hey guys, it's me Sonia and today is day five of week two. And this this session is called the strategy session. And uh, I actually did it, so yay! I didn't skip out and do half of it like I did the other ones. Actually, this one is a lot shorter, so it made it a lot easier to do. Um, this one actually ends in, like last week, in prayer. So I'm supposed to make a prayer. I didn't do the prayer part yet. Um, I did pray while I was doing it, so that's a plus, but I did not finish the prayer part. I will be doing that, though. Um... Okay, so before I start, um, I did want to go over today and tell you guys how I'm feeling today because pretty much all week I have not been feeling this Bible study like at all. <laughs> like nothing in me wanted me to really do this Bible study and I was pushing myself to do it. So that's that. Today I'm feeling pumped. <laughs> today I'm actually interested in doing the Bible study. Um, I recall a song by, um, Charlie Wilson, I believe that's his name, the guy from the Gap Band. He has a song called Blessed, I believe it's called Blessed, and the lyrics are, ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed, yes, living every day with no regret, smile on my face, oh yes, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, and then he names all these things. And he says, oh, 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 I'm blessed. That's how I'm feeling today. <laughs> I'm just feeling today blessed. I had a good week. Um, the week prior, I had a really great week. And I had a really great weekend. So I was expecting this week to be as great. Now, it wasn't as great, but it was still a good week. So I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. And I had a good week despite the fact that I didn't want to do the Bible study. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm heading towards a good weekend, so I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Uh so now I'm going to start the Bible study, at least the portions that I read during the Bible study. So here goes the strategy session. Once again I'm reading in the dark, so guys don't don't judge me. If I'm reading slow, it's because I can't see. I'm looking at shadows. So, yeah. <laughs> when Roman soldiers were being discipled for inappropriate behavior. I'm sorry. When Roman soldiers were being disciplined for inappropriate behavior, a superior officer would often punish them by making them stand outside the headquarters and clad only in their tunics and without their belts, so they looked rather ridiculous in their long tunics and deprived of the one thing, the one item that marked them as soldiers. To be caught without their belts was embarrassing to them. Punishment. The belt, after all, marked them as soldiers. You, sister, are a soldier of the Lord's army. You should constantly and consistently be marked by the truth of your God. And it should be an embarrassment, a shocking word to use perhaps, but let's go with it. An embarrassment to be caught without it. God's truth should be the banner that flies high on the flagpole of your life and over those you love and share relationship with. The church as his body and warrior against darkness in the culture should be known for its commitment to the unchanging unadulterated truth of our great God. Without the prevailing standard, we'll always be subject to falling for the enemy's dangling carrots. Truth. Don't leave home without it. As you prepare to craft your strategy for today, take a brief moment to consider one more thing with me. Genesis account, Genesis account of Adam and Eve is one of the most familiar in scriptures. You may be tempted not to look too closely at it right now, seeing as you've read it dozens, read it dozens, maybe hundreds of times. But I urge you to take, a t take time to do it anyway. The Holy Spirit has a knack of making old stories fresh and new, brimming with renewed insight into Him, into your own heart. Alright, so, 
today we're supposed to be doing the strategy portion of the book. So the strategy is once you have all this intel that we do at the end of the day, the strategy is our prayer. So like I showed you the other day, the strategy is the prayer part. You see this top part? All that is a prayer. The second part, there's no prayer there because I didn't make a prayer. But that's where the prayer is going to go. So the strategy is how are we going to combat the enemy through prayer? And that's where we put the prayer strategy at. So when they say strategy, this is what we're talking about. So she wants us to look at the story of Adam and Eve, which is in Genesis. Now everybody's heard this story several times. And she mentioned that we heard it several, maybe hundreds of times. And so we may miss a couple things in it because we heard it so many times, we no longer pay attention to it. But she said that the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. Um, sometimes he has a knack of doing that. When we read something over again, he can make it fresh and new. So it's not like we're hearing it again you know, um, in vain, it's more like we're hearing it again and we might find something new that we didn't know before. Okay, so go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, 17, as well as chapter 3, verse 6, verse 1 through 6. So I'm not going to go there right now. I've already been there. <laughs> I'm just going to summarize it for you. So, um, Genesis chapter 2 or 16 and 17 is basically God saying, um, that you can eat from, that Adam and Eve could eat from, well, that Adam, because he wasn't talking to Eve because she wasn't there yet, that Adam could eat from any tree in the garden, but not to eat from the one of good and evil, um, because it, if they ate from it, that they'll surely die. And then fast forward to chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, is when the serpent uh, tempts Eve. And he's talking to Eve, and he's like, hey, did, what did God say about the garden or whatnot? And she tells him, and then he kind of flips the script. He's like, well, you won't surely die if you eat from this tree. God just knows that if you eat from it, you'll be like him, knowing good and evil. And so she's like, okay, well, if I look at this fruit, it looks kind of good. And um, it looks good and I can benefit from it because the, the serpent told her that if she, if she ate from it, she'll be like God. After, um, But if you really pay attention to it, we're made in God's own image. So she was already like God. We're made in God's image, so you're like him. But whatever. Um, and then the serpent also said that if she ate from the tree, she, she would she would know from good and evil. Uh, so at this point in time, before she eats the apple, she just knows good. She knows God is good. God's word is good. Everything is good. It's good. But she's thinking that if she eats the apple, that she'll now be like God in a way that she knows both good and evil. Because right now she only knows one and she wants to know more. She wants wisdom. She, she wants this wisdom that God didn't give to her. And he already warned her that she'll certainly die. Now, she didn't physically certainly die immediately. But spiritually, on the spiritual realm, she certainly died. Anywho, we're going to move on. So, the question was... Hold on, guys. I told you I'm reading in shadows. So, the question was, what was the truth, the standard set by God? So, I put... Um, they were free to eat of any tree. Now, I did catch this, even though, even though, um, I, I've read this several times, I did recently catch this, so what, uh, Priscilla Shire was talking about was true. This Holy Spirit does reveal other things to you when you look at the scripture again. So even though I read the scripture several times before, just recently, when I read this again for this Bible study, I did catch this. The word says that they could eat from any tree in the garden. Any tree in the garden. Now, any tree that 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 that's also the tree of good and evil, but there's a warning when it comes to that tree. So God warned them. 
You can eat from all these trees here. But look, that one right there, don't do it. So, the freedom was, the freedom you can, you have the freedom to do that if you want to, but I'm going to warn you right now, it's kind of like, kind of like me telling my kids not to touch something. Like, you, you, I can't, if I, if I'm in the bathroom and you're, you're not in the bathroom, you can go mess with whatever you want outside the bathroom, but I'm telling you right now, don't do it because there's going to be a consequence to it. Basically what God was saying. And in, instead of heeding the warning, she said, well, well, this is a Christian um, video, so I'm not going to say F that, but <laughs> basically forget that. Um, and she did what she wanted to, and then she brought her husband into it. But my thing is, Adam should have known better. Adam was there. Before Eve was there to manipulate anything, Adam was there naming the animals, tilling the earth, you know. He was there with God. Like, he had the ultimate relationship with God. He talked to him. He walked with him. He probably ate with him. Like, why would you then listen to your wife, who's only been with you like two seconds? I don't know how long they were in the garden before this happened. But... I mean, you were with God first. All of a sudden, she gives you an apple. God told you specifically not to eat that apple because of it will bring a death. God didn't tell Eve that. He told Adam. He, Adam, I just don't understand. His leadership wasn't there. He wasn't being a leader. And, uh, yeah, anywho, I'm not trying to make this long with my own little rants. I was just thinking about that. Adam always always irritated me when 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 and if I pass away, I want to talk to Adam. I I got some words for him. Uh, I may not even be thinking about this when I pass away. I'll be so happy to be a Jesus. I may not even remember anything that I want to tell him. I have some words to say to a couple people in the Bible. I just got some questions. Uh, anywho. Anywho, the next question is, um, what did the enemy say to slant the truth, the truth to Eve? He said that you will not certainly, you will not certainly die. So God says you will certainly die to Adam. And I guess the message was related to Eve, but he told her that she will not certainly die. So that's, that's what slanted the truth for, uh, Eve. Um, what do you think made the enemy's proposition so appealing? Um, I put the you will be like God statement would would make it seem appealing because she felt like she needed to be like God because he knew everything and also knowing good and evil because she only knew good. She was wondering, well, what is evil like? That's kind of like saying the grass is greener on the other side, so you want to go over there and see. Like you hear, it's, you hear it's better, but you're not sure, so you want to go see for yourself. Or or someone saying, oh, I'm allergic to, to grapes, but I just want to taste them once. Or something like that. She just wanted to see what it was like, but she didn't know all the consequences to it. Well, she might have. Nah... Well, she was the first perfect woman, so she might have, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to talk about that, because I'm going to get on a tangent. I got some words for her, just just so we know. If, if, I, if I have my memory when I'm with Jesus, and he's like, hey, you can talk to the people of the Bible if you want to. If I have my memory, I got some questions. Um, what was the ripple effect of the enemy's deception? So I put the ripple effect was sin, shame, guilt, and fear. So first I put sin because, of course, when they ate from the apple, that was sin. God already warned you not to do it, so that's sin. Um, and wanting to be, be like God, I think that's a sin. Um, I mean, we are in God's image. We are the, I don't want to say we're the image of God, but he made us in his image. Um, but he didn't make us to be him. He didn't make us to be a God. Um, I put shame 
because immediately after they ate the fruit, they realized they were naked. So they are, they're ashamed of their nakedness. I put guilt because they probably felt like, man, now God's going to know what I did. And then I put fear because when Jesus, when God was walking in the garden, they got scared and they hid. Like he couldn't see him already. Like, you know, he's God. You had a relationship with him. You know, he, he knows everything. He sees everything. Like, why even try to hide? He made the tree that you're hiding behind. He can still see you. But whatever. Um, now, personalize this story. What are the unique ways the enemy makes his way, way appealing to you? Now, this one, I don't know if I necessarily want to share because you guys might come after me one day if you get mad at me or something. And I'd be like, oh, no, I was vulnerable with you and you took advantage of me. But then again, this is a Bible study and we're supposed to be sharing. So I'm going to share. So I put, um, he makes it easy and simple to do and conceals the consequences, which is pretty standard. That's what he does. Um, yeah. So a lot of times, I don't want to say I necessarily don't want to sin, but it just it's just easy. There's a couple of ways that it, that it gets me, and I'm not going to share those ways. I'm not going to do that. I'm not stupid. Uh, I might share it with accountability partner, but I'm not going to share it on the internet like that. But um, yeah, he makes sin easy to do, very simple. And sometimes, even though I've done the sin before, I forget the consequences. Because all sin has consequences, whether it's immediate or not. And I forget the consequences, and I'm like, dang it, I knew this was going to happen. Um, there's a song by Ty Tribbett, and it says, um, uh, what does it say? Oh, what does it say? I can't remember the lyrics. Uh, I can almost tell you each time I'm going to fall, a uh, devil always does the same thing. Uh, I can't remember the lyrics, but pretty much he, he basically says he knows when he's going to fall because he Satan does the same thing that he did last time, but it's so tempting that he falls into it anyway. And then he feels the guilt and shame all over again, basically what the lyrics are saying. I can't remember the name of the song either, but it's a song by Ty Trippett, and I love it. Um, and the chorus is kind of like, I lift my hands to you, you are my only help. It could be called, you're my only help. I don't know. Anywho, so that was that. Um, the next paragraph reads, the tempter's falsehood is in the Garden of Eden was was so clever and sounded so decadent to the first couple that he was able to persuade them to rebel against God, destroying perfection not only for themselves, but for all of their descendants, for all of us. Uh, those are pretty high stakes. M must have been pretty strong delusion. Uh, even in this perfect setting, which perfectly intact, with perfectly intact identities and perfect relationship with the Father, they allowed the enemy to lead them down the path containing d devastating generational consequences. Uh, he drew Eve's attention to what the, to what she couldn't have, tricking her to ignoring the abundance God told her she could have. Satan's strategy against you is equally clever. He plans to zero in on your deepest insecurities and desires with, in, with the intention of showing you how you can bypass God to meet every single one. But we're not falling for it anymore, are we? But the spotlight of God's truth is going to expose every single scheme of the enemy. Um... With the prayer strategy you're about to craft and the belt of truth you're going to wear, you can gird, gird, you can be girded and protected from this day forward. So grab your sheet of, grab a sheet or two from the back of your workbook, and get started. So this is where you're supposed to get your um, prayer plan together, um, and then it talks about the divine, divine warrior, which is the church. 
Um, you can read it yourself. It's quite lengthy. Well, it's one page. It's not lengthy. But um, you might get more out of it if you read it yourself. We'll see. Uh, but I did underline some things in here. I don't know why when I get on the camera, my eye starts to bother me and I want to scratch it. Well, not scratch it, but wipe it. Okay. Um, so basically in Isaiah, it's talking about Isaiah 59 verse 15 through 19 is basically talking about um we god's people were messing up we were we were messing up we were acting crazy acting foolish being full of sin doing all type of magical stuff doing prostitutional stuff what does it say it says sorcery in here i believe where is it at um uh, I can't I can't find it right now but we were doing a bunch of like really sinful stuff just spitting all up in God's face and so God was like oh vengeance is mine and he was about to 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 throw his vengeance on us and he's like is is there seriously no one that will stand up and and stand up for these people you know his people us <laughs> is there seriously no one that's gonna stand up you know what? I'm going to have to do it myself. So basically, God's love for us um, caused him to create a savior, which was himself. He saved us from his wrath because he was about to knuck if you buck us. And and then he told himself no. And that, that that's, <laughs> that's how great God is. He can tell himself no by sending himself as a savior because nobody was going to do it for us. And he, he just thought it was sad. Anyway, so in Isaiah, he was about to take vengeance against us. Um, but then he changed his mind and he became our savior. Um, so I'm going to read this little passage that uh, came after that. It says, and sadly, the enemy is is not some pagan nation. Hold on. I'm reading the dark guy. So excuse me. Uh, in this case, it is the children of God themselves. So that was us when we were being trifling. We were the children of God being trifling, being nasty, being sinful creatures. Like I said, spitting all up in God's face. Um, fast forward to the next, the next uh, paragraph. Under the new covenant established in... In Christ, the hostility and an imminent in enmity between the Father and humanity has been dissolved. So, what does that mean? Basically, the wrath that we were about to get because we were trifling, nasty, sinful has been dissolved because of Christ. If God didn't send Himself in the form of Christ to save us, we would have got it. We would have, we would have got it. He would have tore us up, but he sent himself in the form of Christ to die for our sins and redeem us. So right here it says the the hostility and enmity, enmity, <laughs> enmity, enmity. Between the Father and humanity has been dissolved. Hallelujah. If you don't have a hallelujah, I have one for you. Hallelujah. You can take that and keep it with you if you want. Um, next, the, la the I underline one more thing. It says, the church is the presence of God on earth through which he comes to wage war warfare and claim the victory that has already been secured in his believed son, beloved son. Um, so yeah, in Isaiah, we, we find out that we were trifling people and I have to say we, um, because I don't want to say you and I don't want to say me is all of us, the children of God were trifling, nasty, sinful people. We we're supposed to be different from the world and we ended up looking just like them, if not worse. And so God redeemed us with his, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Um, 
And before he redeemed us, he put on armor. And uh, he was about to tear us up. He put on armor. And he was going to give us his wrath with his armor on. But instead, he loved us. Sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And so we were redeemed in Christ. And so that armor that he's going to use to take us out, he chose to use to give to us as a gift. And so when we're praying, that's the armor we're wearing. So I'm going to go over this for just like a little second because I don't want to make this super long. Uh, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Uh, he was amazed that there was no no one interceding so his own his own arm brought salvation his own righteousness supported him he put on his righteousness like a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in a zeal cloak um so the armor that he gave us is the armor that he is wearing so when we fight against our enemy, we're fighting with the actual armor of God, which means we can't lose. That's why we're seated in the heavenly realm. We're seated because the battle's already won. It's fought. We just got to put on our armor. I look like I have bags under my eyes. I'm sorry, guys. I was just looking at myself like, man, looks like I have bags under my eyes. I'm getting distracted, but pretty much that's it. That's it for day five, week two. In week three, I guess it's going to start tomorrow? I don't know. I, last week I left a day between between um, weeks. I can start tomorrow, though. I don't know. I might give it a break for a day. Try to work on my prayer life. <laughs> for the day I guess because I, I mean I've been praying I won't say that I haven't been praying I've been praying because I pray almost every day actually I think I pray every day but they're not like real long prayers they're just kind of like personal prayers like Lord help me get to the store safely and back in Jesus name amen or uh, Lord thank you for not allowing my child to break the plate when it fell or something like that or Lord thank you for not allowing my child to jump off the chair and hurt themselves because they won't listen when I tell them to stop jumping off the chair or something like that. Like, they're those type of prayers. So, uh, I got to get more into my prayer life because there's a battle going on and now I know about it. And I, I now know that I have some, some armor to put on. I'm not just out here willy-nilly. And just now, when we read this, it says that we look a little silly as Christians not wearing our armor. We look like we're just wearing long tunics. And that's supposed to be embarrassing. So we're we're embarrassing ourselves when we're not wearing the armor. We look a little silly. Anywho, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be doing week three starting tomorrow or if I'll give it a day off. We'll see. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.